I'm about to show you a top secret trick in DaVinci Resolve that saved my keister on a number of occasions when doing chroma key because my green screen isn't perfect. I'm gonna teach you how to get that perfect key and turn this into this. This lesson is brought to you by Ameridroid.com. If you love to learn and love to tinker, Ameridroid.com is the site for you. Single board computers, maker tech, and home automation, all from their American Support Center. Shop with a company that we know and trust. Visit Ameridroid.com today. I believe you're going to find this process to be surprisingly easy and fast in DaVinci Resolve. Here's Jeff a clip of him standing on our green screen. I want to point out a couple of things and he's actually pointing for me. Um, you see that there's a lot of shadows up here at the top. We've also got shadows on the side and shadows at the bottom, lots of wrinkles. These kinds of attributes on a green screen would typically cause big problems with a green screen. We have to perfectly light our green screen. We gotta have tons of soft boxes and every kind of light in under the sun uh, to create a virtual sun in order to perfectly light this green screen, but that is not a problem with DaVinci Resolve anymore. Notice the black line as well. That's actually damage on our green screen that was caused from our move from Studio D to Studio E, and that is now a part of our green screen. So that's also going to pose a problem in the traditional sense. Now we're going to solve these problems very, very quickly and easily here in DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so Jeff, as you can see, is a vertical shot. I shot this in 4K at 2160 by 3840 on a Pocophone F1 smartphone. So the reason I did that, of course, is to maximize the vertical space. We wanna increase the resolution of our uh, chroma key subject by making sure that we have framed them correctly. We don't wanna do a horizontal shot for this because then we would have only 2160 height and we'd be throwing away um, about 1,700 pixels of data that we could have if we shot vertically. So that's why we shot it this way. However, my canvas, as you can see, is 16 over nine. So I wanna quickly change that. Um, I'm gonna go for a custom layout here, 2160 by 3840. And now we've got a perfect crop around him. So Jeff is uh, in that frame. I'm gonna just pull this in. This is one of the quick little tips that I'm gonna give you because we're gonna pull out some of that shadow uh, at the top and I wanna make this so that his shoes are just kinda on the edge there. We're not getting too much into chroma key shooting here. This is more of a technical tutorial on how to now improve the chroma key based on the fact that, you know what? This chroma key is pretty crappy. <laughs> Look at that, it's horrible. Um, but we're gonna be able to actually use this and it's gonna be touched up and look beautiful in the end. All right, so now with that shot, I'm gonna jump over to my color correction uh, over here and we're going to do something really fun. This is where DaVinci Resolve shines is its automation and I'm just gonna blow your minds right about uh, now. I'm gonna click on my little eyedropper tool here, uh, which you hear me call a Doppler. That's just <laughs> my own kind of linguistics. Uh, they call it a qualifier here. Um, and over here on this drop down, it's defaulting to HSL. I, I actually want to change this to 3D. And this is where DaVinci Resolve is like mind blowing. So now what we have here, we've got a big shadow here. We've got shadows here, lines, 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 shadows up here. It's nasty. But watch what happens if I just kind of like draw over top of this now that I've selected 3D in my qualifier. I'm just simply coloring over everything that is not Jeff. And notice I wanna just kinda of go over that black line a little bit so that DaVinci Resolve knows, hey, this shadow here, this is actually part of my chroma key even though it's not a perfect green screen. I'm just coloring in here super duper sloppy. I'm gonna go around the bottom here, color in these, uh, uh, these shadows over here and I can let go and I can keep tapping and I can keep touching like this it, You don't have to do uh, you don't have to do a perfect job by any stretch. This is not Photoshop This is the magic of DaVinci Resolve. Could you imagine if Photoshop gave us this kind of capability? I literally am done. So do you notice over here? My node shows a hollow Jeff 
Well, if I invert that, now I see only Jeff. Okay, well, how do I translate that to this screen here? So I'm gonna right click here and go add alpha output and now drag down here. Notice that now the background is gone and the reason is because I inverted that. So see that? That's what you're gonna see as soon as you add the alpha output. Um, but this button here is going to in fact invert my selection. Boom. How crazy is that? So did you catch how I did that? I'm gonna show you once again. I'm gonna just delete my uh, alpha. Here we go, remove alpha output. So now that I've colored that in with, okay, my qualifier, 3D, and then I've just kind of scribbled all over the green and all over the shadows and everything else. Just don't touch Jeff because then I'm gonna lose part of him. Now over here, again, now this is redundant. I'm just showing you again to reiterate, uh, add alpha output. That's a right click, add alpha output. Now it creates this guy here. Now take the alpha from my node and drag it down into here. And now I've got this. If you're seeing it like that, just remember you can invert it with this button down here. You're inverting your selection. And now that is what your chroma key looks like. Isn't that beautiful? But you can see a little bit, if I zoom in here, notice Jeff's hair. This is typically what we see with reasonably good green screen. So that's a reasonably good chroma key right there. But we do see this spill coming off from the green onto Jeff's beard. And you're gonna see this if you've got an afro or big hair or anything like that. I don't have that problem because I'm completely bald. But you do see on Jeff, certainly, uh, around his beard, you've got this green kind of hue going on. So how do we correct that? It's as simple as, again, mind-bendingly easy. I'm just zooming in here so that you can see a little bit better. Mind-bendingly easy with DaVinci Resolve. What am I going to do? I'm going to go down here and click the de-spill button. What the hell? <laughs> Are you kidding? Right? Like, if you've never seen this before, is that not mind-bending? This is like magic. Look at that. Look at that friggin' key. It's astonishing. Now, you may end up with some little bit of bleed and a little bit of things scattered about so you can use your clean black to just kind of tidy up the edge. See what it's doing to his beard there? So I can tidy up the edge. You can use clean white to pull that out a little bit and tidy up the edge. With Jeff, I don't need to do that. It looks like we've got some pretty good lighting. I've There, you can see the numbers that I've used. And there we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna jump right back to my timeline and look at Jeff. He's looking pretty fantastic. And now, next step, you see professional clips. I'm gonna just drag that up so that I've got a, uh, a track underneath of this. You see professional clips where the chroma key is perfect. So you're talking, like I'm talking about um, stock uh, videos and things like that. So let's jump onto generators and we're gonna do exactly the same thing. Just at the start of my track, I'm gonna drag solid color. And now I'm gonna resize that right to the end of Jeff. Notice it's not snapping. I'm gonna click on my, uh, my little magnet tool here so that it does snap. And now I'm gonna click on my generator, the solid color. I'm gonna to go to the generator and change my color to chroma key green right there and hit okay. You can change that to whatever the heck you want, right? But I'm gonna choose that nice vibrant green because it keys so nicely. Now look at that, look at Jeff. Now I've got a little bit of fuzz around his beard. Do you see that? See how there's a bit of a bleed there? I wanna fix that, I'm gonna go back into my color correction here and I'm going to zoom in using my scroll wheel on my mouse and we just want to touch that up so that's going to be this clean black right there just bringing that down uh, I don't want it down quite all the way I want a little bit of clean black on there and a little bit of clean white but that softens the edge a little bit and I don't want to overkill that all right there we go now keep in mind, we have already learned on the show show how you can do um, facial tracking and do touch ups and things like that. You can now do that by creating a serial node or a parallel node. In this case, I would probably do a parallel node and create that now. Um, 
but we're not learning that today. We've already learned that in the past, but I just wanted to kind of mention that you can now do touch-ups like that. So there we go. We've got Jeff on a perfect chroma key background now. There he is. Hi, Jeff. And that looks absolutely flawless. Check out the quality of that chroma key green screen behind Jeff. It's just perfect for exporting to your other editor. Now, if you're doing all of your editing here in DaVinci Resolve, however, obviously we don't need that green. We're gonna actually remove that generator. And instead, let's create a backdrop. So I'm just gonna import an image. This can be a video or whatever else. Um, so let's drag this picture here that I've downloaded into the uh, background layer and zoom in so that the positioning is approximately right to where Jeff is standing and how he's standing. There we go. Now highlight Jeff and go into our color correction here. We're gonna create a parallel node. And on that parallel node, we're just gonna make a few little adjustments. He's looking pretty good there in the scene, but we wanna just touch this up a little bit, bring in a little more green on his person and uh, make that look like he's a little more part of the scene. There we go. And just really, really quickly, there's Jeff standing in the middle of the forest and we can do our zoom and move around the shot and everything else. And ooh, does that ever look good? Now the final thing that we need to do here in DaVinci Resolve, of course, I recommended at the top of the video that we shoot this vertical video because we want Jeff to maximize the uh, available pixels on the camera. However, if we convert this to say 1080p, so 1920 by 1080, 16 over nine format for your TV, you'll notice we get black bars on the left and right. And the interesting thing about this is if we zoom in on Jeff's shot, Look at what happens. Kind of strange, eh? So what's happening there is over in our chroma key mat here uh, in the node, um, it is framing to the, uh, the actual video shot of Jeff's shot. So what we need to do is click here on our window and click a, now notice I've highlighted the chroma key layer here for the alpha. Um, so I've highlighted that and I'm clicking on the square window here and see what happened there. So now I'm just gonna drag this guy down over top of Jeff and make sure you don't go outside because see what happens and frame that in like that and then we're going to take a look at our shot and see how that looks. And that's all it takes to get a perfect key in DaVinci Resolve. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to give me a subscribe and a thumbs up on YouTube. I'd appreciate that very much. And in the meantime, don't forget if you are not having fun, you're doing it wrong. I'm Robbie Ferguson on The Show Show for Category 5 Technology TV. I'll see you next time.